We need to set up an API key once to provide this to the Pi as a key to your new Pi Cockpit account. In order to get the API key, click on your username in the top right corner. Click Profile and Settings. Click on API keys here. And then click on the Add API key button. Here you are going to be asked for your password to make adding API keys as secure as possible. I copy the password once again from KeyPass and click on Create API Key. Now here you see the new API key. I'm going to copy and paste it and add it to KeyPass as well. The important bit to remember about the API key is that it is displayed only once. We are storing it in the system in a hashed way, so we also have no way of reconstructing the API key once we have displayed it uh, this time to you. This is in order to keep you safe. Here you see the API key and you can manage it. You can give it a different name. Uh, let's name it and if you ever want to get rid of it, if you lose it or for whatever reason else, you can delete it here. Currently, you can add as many API keys as you want. I might possibly introduce security and rights management for the future with this. But you can use one API key for several pies, so this step is only necessary once. Now it's time to boot up your pie. We will need to use the command line just for the initial installation of a Pi Cockpit client. I'm working on making that easier in the future, but right now this step is necessary. Make sure you have an internet connection on your Pi. Click on the terminal icon and a terminal will appear. The terminal icon is this icon right up here in the taskbar of Raspbian. The Pi Cockpit client is the piece of software which connects your Pi with PiCockpit.com. I've come up with an easy one-liner which allows you to install the Pi Cockpit client. I will also post step-by-step -step instructions which actually say what this one-liner does if you are more security conscious, uh, which uh, I totally agree with. But uh, here's the easy way. You've got to enter, exactly as I'm, ent I'm entering it, the following line. Bash space minus C space quotation mark dollar left parenthesis c u r l space minus k space minus s space https colon double forward slash pi cockpit dot com slash z up dot s h right parenthesis quotation mark now, once you've entered the command exactly as I've displayed it here, simply press enter and the command will start to execute. As I said, I will post further instructions on what it actually does. Uh, basically, it adds our repository and then it installs the Pi Cockpit client. If it asks you, do you want to continue, you can simply press enter here and it will. I'm using a Pi 4 to demonstrate this, but the Pi Cockpit client is compatible with every Pi which runs Raspbian currently. I support Raspbian Buster and the previous one, Raspbian Stretch. Now the Pi Cockpit client has been started and it's asking us for the API key. This was the key which we got before from PiCockpit.com, which we created. So now you've got to enter it. Please be aware that the API key is case sensitive and you've got to put in the dot as well the precise place where it is. So I'm going to enter the API key which I have now. And once you've entered the API key, press enter and it will connect. Don't worry if you mistype the API key, Pi Cockpit will ask you to enter it once more. Now you can see that the Pi Cockpit client has finished connecting. You can see it in this message, finished with connect. Your Pi is now connected to PiCockpit.com if everything was okay. Pi Cockpit client is now started in the background on your Pi and will run whenever you restart your Pi. It will be automatically started. 
now we are finished on the command line. This is everything which we needed to do here. So you can close it and open the web browser to see how the Pi is now connected to PyCockpit.com. Okay, now we're back in the web browser and you can see here, this is the main page, the overview of Pi Cockpit. Now we click on My Raspberry Pis, the new Raspberry Pi which was just added. It is live, it is online and our first step is going to be to give it its own name. So let's just call it and by the way, you can also add UTF-8 symbols to the name of the Pi. So here you go. And the Pi is now called the Big Riddle. For instance, uh, as you see, we added a little billiard ball here. As you can see, the Pi displays some data about itself in the overview. You can see its current private IPs, uh, including the Wi-Fi and the Ethernet IP, and the public IP, which is pretty handy to see first of all which PIs are in which network because you can have PIs in many different networks. It doesn't really matter where the PIs are as long as they have internet access. They will report back their live data to PyCockpit.com where you can access it using a web browser on your smartphone, on your desktop, on the Pi itself even. doesn't really matter where you open PyCockpit.com, you'll have access to the data. And if you click on this little heart icon here or health state icon, you'll actually see some live uh, usage data and uh, some st statistics, which is very interesting. For instance, the SOC temperature here, you can see how it will perform under load. If I put more stress on the Pi, this should go up and so on. And then uh, you see the current RAM usage and how much RAM the Pi has in total. This is a Pi 4, 4 GB, so we actually have 3.8 uh, GB in total. This number excludes the amount which is reserved for the video core the CPU load is displayed and the hard disk usage. These statistics are updated once every second, live from your Pi. If your Pi will go offline, you will see it here in the online state, then this will turn into a red offliner. Clicking on uh, the Pi's name or the image will take you to an overview which will give you lots more information, like for instance the, the MAC address, some more information about the system. You can uh, not all of this information is present in the default run of Pi Doctor, which is run, which is displayed here because it's run in privacy conscious mode. The more interesting bit is here the sensors. As you see, these, this is much more data than on the previous one. You get, for instance, link quality and signal level for your Wi-Fi signal. As you see here, my Wi-Fi signal is very, very good. I have a link quality of 70 of 70. All of this is updated once every second. You get the uptime, you actually get how much of a root partition is used in bytes, and the network total received data, sent data, this keeps ticking up, as you see, because obviously we're sending data to refresh to PyCockpit.com. Again, you see the load of all cores, how much has been written and read from the disk and to the disk in total. So this uh, is like a selection of very useful information. Uh, good to know about your Raspberry Pi's health state. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you what happens when the Pi goes offline. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to shut it down. Pay attention to the online status here. As you can see, the Pi has now a state of offline. You will see that there's no live information coming through anymore. The information here is kept back from the state it was in previously. When the Pi starts again, all this information is going to be refreshed.